okay so in today's session we are going to discuss um create record like how to create a record how to delete a record and how to update a record all right and uh, if you remember in previous session we have uh, we have discussed how to establish connection from mule to the salesforce and then um, how to run queries from from a mulesoft api all right so let's go ahead and discuss uh, create a record okay so <clears throat> if you remember we have already uh, created a uh, object right uh, in fact two objects right in in, in our uh, salesforce right so employee and the uh, employee address okay uh, so okay so this name does not look good right okay this is my object name right so this is the object that uh, we created uh, so here is my employee right so we have fields like the employee name right employee name and the age and the email right and the similarly uh, actually should be employee id right it should be employee id and this is employee name and then uh, we have this odd, uh, object which is related to the employee and this is the employee address right so um, each employee can hold or can have multiple addresses so we created a uh, master chat relationship between the employee and the employee address okay so employee address right so here is a reference to the employee so so basically this address is associated with this employee so this is how we can reference it and this is how your uh, uh, master detail uh, relationship in salesforce look like right so let's go and change few things so this let me change this first one okay one just I, I basically uh, I want to change the I want to change name of this field right employee address this is does not look good right so where have we have to go uh, we have to go to object and fields object manager and then search employee right so this is my employee address all right level so let me change this okay let's me refresh this page okay so sometime it takes takes time to um Okay, then I also change the name of that relationship field, which is uh, employee address, master detail, this one. Okay. This is not employee address, actually should be employee. Field should say employee. Uh, field name, that's fine, that's does not matter. I just want to change the label so that we see something more, um, sensible logical okay let's see okay it's so not refreshed yet so sometime in salesforce sometime there is a delay um, in, in the user interface so your changes does not reflect right away okay so but anyways right so uh, yeah 
here you can see now employee and here is your employee address right uh, okay and if i come over here actually let me change one more thing quickly This not employee name actually this is employee id auto generated employee id right so that that should be fine right now we want to add a record right um so so say suppose our requirement is we want to create a record um for the employee or employee address in this uh, from the from the mule okay from a uh we we want to make a uh, call from the mule to the salesforce to create a record of type employee or the employee address it does not matter right so i can create the em em employee uh, employee um, record right but that will be very simple because it has only three four fields right but if you look at this one uh, because when if i create a employee uh, if i create a employee address record I have to associate that employee address record with an employee. So this one has a uh, complexity. So I will take this example, right? Uh, uh, and I will create an object of employee address and associate that with an employee. Okay. Uh, from the uh, from the mule right so if i create the employee object it will be simple because it does not have any relationship with any other object but if i create the uh, um, uh, uh, object of employee address i will be able to show you that how to uh, establish or how to, how to create the relationship as well from the mule uh, api okay so if i want to create a uh, uh, record of the employee address in the salesforce what we have to do if you see uh, click on the new and then say suppose first line right and then you can state should be India and then here you select the employee right so suppose I select the first one okay so these are the fields that you we need if you want to create in create an object of an employee address okay so let's see how we can do the same thing from uh, mule okay so in mule uh, okay um i want to open employee employee address table right because we need we, uh, we we need to know the name of all these uh, fields right and remember that anywhere actually in the salesforce also in the code we always use the api name or the field name that you see here we don't use the labels okay so in salesforce to create a record okay we use the create uh, operation uh, let's see where it is here it is okay here is my create create uh, operation okay and uh, so connector configuration so you need to uh, create a connector right so we have discussed in detail that how uh, how we create the uh, connector and we have discussed all type of uh, configuration right we have discussed basic or to the zero uh, auth jwt and auth use id password and this one is using this one so it does not matter for our discussion now so uh, we have discussed this that how to create the connection right so i'm, I'm not going to repeat that again so select your connector and then 
here in this field select the object type which you want to create right so we want to we are, we want to create employee address so let me go here let me see mm. it is so this is I want to create this one employee address all right now we need to provide the in the payload right we need to provide the all the field data that is required to create this object okay so for that normally I mean you can definitely uh, specify your payload here as well but generally we uh, we use the transform uh, message service to construct our payload for the uh, Salesforce operation okay so all these uh, Salesforce operations like your create update delete all these operations takes array uh, parameter okay so which means we can create update delete uh, multiple objects together but obviously of the same type right so like in this case because we are creating the employee address records right so we can create multiple employee uh, records in the single call okay so you can specify uh, array like this so you can you can have a, a record detail for one object here then then the uh, record detail for other object here so like that let's remove this one and come over here so here we have to specify field values right uh, so what all field value we have to specify so address line one so it will come value is uh, say suppose 30 clad stone straight okay and then you have um, what is the next field state and country so this is your UP or say suppose MP India okay and obviously these are two different fields so we have to do here and come over here right next right now this is important okay next we want to create this master child relationship okay so here the challenge is we do not want to create a new employee object but we want to associate right we want to associate an existing employee object with the new record that we are creating and this is what we did right when when I created the uh, new uh, object you must have noticed right we selected existing employee object right so how we will do it here right to do that actually what we need to do is select the field name right that the relationship name um, API name for that relationship so this is my master detail uh, uh, relationship or relationship field and the field name for that relationship is employee underscore address underscore underscore C so I will go over here right I'll say this colon uh, uh, and then enter right one thing that we have to change is we have to change this uh, uh, C to R okay and after that we have to write a um, element called the type 
ओके टाइप इज टाइप इज टाइप ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट दैट वी वॉन्ट टू एसोसिएट ओके सो इन आवर केस वी वॉन्ट टू आई मीन दिस विल बेसिकली हेल्प द वेन दिस क्वेरी विल गो टू द सेल्स फोर्स सेल्स फोर्स विल यूज दिस इंफॉर्मेशन टू लुक अप द ऑब्जेक्ट राइट और टू सर्च और टू फाइंड द ऑब्जेक्ट राइट सो वी हैव टू टेल वॉट काइंड ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट वी वॉन्ट सेल्स फोर्स टू सर्च और लुक अप फॉर एस राइट सो इन आवर इन दिस केस बिकॉज रिलेशनशिप दैट रिलेशनशिप दैट इम्प्लॉय एड्रेस हैज इज विद द इम्प्लॉय रिकॉर्ड राइट सो वी वॉन्ट सेल्स फोर्स टू लुक अप फॉर द इम्प्लॉय ऑब्जेक्ट्स right not not a count object or not any other object right so value of type is object name right object name or the record uh, yeah we call the object name uh in the master detail relationship right so our object name is employee employee right employee__c and then the field name for which we want to do the lookup right uh, so let uh, let's go to the employee object right then these are employee object right and if you see this is the name of my uh, record right api name for 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 the employee records right employee object so that is employee underscore underscore c so here it will be employee underscore underscore c and then on which value we want to do the lookup okay so for now just to keep this simple say suppose i want to do the uh, lookup on this name right and and the value for this is so say suppose i want to associate the the object that i'm creating i want to associate that object with this record this employee record 001 right so the value for this will be that 001 so what is happening i'm asking uh, salesforce to establish this relationship underscore 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 c by look up in this object where the value of name field is this okay so look up in this object where the value of name equal to this guy emp0001 right so this is what it means okay so i think we are good to go uh, okay and then this is create create will take the payload right uh, okay and here is my payload it is my object type and there is a connection everything looks good so let's change let's change the this url to create i mean if it's it, it's query then it will still work but just uh for our example right i change the you uh, path from query to create like this right so i think we are good to go let's test this okay okay so my api is deployed let's go over here k 
create yeah so you can see here successful right so um sales uh we connected to the salesforce uh, my api connected to the salesforce and then it sent this payload to the salesforce to create the object right salesforce has created the object and then it sent the response stating that uh object has been created successfully right and then in my payload actually i'm converting that uh, java object to json and uh sending to my browser so this is what you see so if you see here successful equal to two it means object is created successfully and this is the unique id that uh, has been generated by salesforce for my object okay so let's uh, see if it's uh, if my object is created or not uh, all objects right so i think uh, this is the object so we had only up to 008 now we have 009 as well okay or let, let, let's uh, create one more should not matter come over here yeah here it is now if you come over here and you will see this is the value that i have uh mentioned in my mule api right and uh, this is the and this this was actually uh, important to see right i associated my when i created my object i associated it with the employee 001 right so that which you can see here emp 001 now this is good but in real scenario you may not know value of the uh, this employee id right so uh because this is auto generated right so what if i want to do this lookup for the object based on a based on a um actual value based on some some other field or some other value for example employee name right because i will know what is the employee name okay so can we use the employee name here can we do can we request the salesforce or can we ask the salesforce to do the lookup of the object based on the other field right like the employee name so the answer is yes we can like this one so the employee name is for, uh, the new the new object that i will create i want to associate it with uh with uh, say suppose this this guy right employee name j so i want to associate it with j so what i have to do here is so i will remove this and i will say j like this okay so control s okay i'm waiting for this hot deploy to complete and then we'll run this program again okay done let's run this again unknown unknown description okay let's see what happened invalid input is that invalid input invalid input invalid and let me check that uh, invalid field oh, which field is invalid so there may be some typo or something like that let me let's check that once employee name employee underscore name oh you're right right so this is the right this is a mistake that normally we do right we don't need we, we we don't need to use that label we need have to use the field name right i'm sorry so it was my bad right oops right. 
control as save okay let's wait for the deployment again we'll see it should work now so that was that was a mistake So now it says the field name provided employee name underscore underscore C is not an external ID or index field for the employee underscore underscore C invalid field. Okay. Now there is another rule in, in the Salesforce, right? We can do the lookup, right? Or the Salesforce actually can do the lookup only based on the fields which are indexed or uh or which we have set up as external id so actually when we set up any field as external id it get in index automatically right so uh index or automatic if you see like this one in in first attempt we use this field right and if you see this is indexed right and uh, this is not indexed so salesforce is complaining that this if you want to do the lookup based on this api name field name then this field should be indexed right or then external id so external when we set up any id or field as external id it gets indexed automatically so same thing right and so indexing is a way in the salesforce so uh, database maybe run or uh, do indexing on that field but actually if you make any field index then you can use that you can use the value of that field to search that kind of record from from this global search right so what and what does it mean is right now we can use this employee id to search records of this object uh, uh, from this global search right now if i make this field as a uh, indexed right or they set it as external id right i will able to search object or the record of this object using the value of this field as well so if i type j right now hmm, i will not get anything maybe right so it this is this this is different okay this is in uh, user object so the objects from the uh, from from employee is not coming here in this search because this is not indexed right so let's update this field and make it indexable and uh, or the external external field right so here we can set any field as external external id right and we will use it further right so just let me tell you on very high level that what this extend if uh, we select any field or if we make any field as external id what does it mean so it means uh value of this field will come from some external system right so suppose you have a um um di on a different system right where you have some data and you want to get that data you, you want to store that data or sync that data uh, from other system to the salesforce right and you have this uh, employee record right now that system has the employee name as the unique 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 uh, unique unique value right so you can make here uh, in salesforce you can make uh, uh, any field as external id that will let salesforce that uh, value of this field is actually unique and it will come or it is unique in some other system and the value of this field will come from the other system okay so that is the use of the external id okay now see this is external id so this looks good let's try here yeah now it worked Okay, so successful history, it means my object is created. Right, 
multiply so here is 11 okay so this time as you can see we use other field another field right uh, for the lookup right and uh, this was actually I mean I stuck uh, some time back on this 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 configuration so that is the reason I thought to cover it so that it get recorded and uh, you people can use it as well right so this is how we create the object so in my case it's a simple object but it does not matter right you can have objects with lot of values the same thing will apply and uh, it's going to work in the same way right same concept right so this is how we create object okay now let's look at the another uh, operation which we call the delete so here is my delete operation let me delete this guy remove this guy right so here is delete so in delete as well same thing yep here all right so in delete we need to so delete operation basically can delete a record remember that it does not delete the object or metadata it deletes the records inside an object okay which means record means this these are the these are my records right so it deletes the record okay based on id record id okay so for example uh, if i want to delete this record 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, right if i want to delete this record then i can use the delete operation but inside the delete operation i have to know the id of this object okay and in the user interface in browser actually we can see the id here at the at the top right so this is the id of this record so i can use this here oops this right and i can use i mean this is an array so we can deal multiple objects together right so let's take one more right and and as i have uh, already mentioned right i mean um, you can write i mean obviously uh, this api will not be like this right we cannot uh, delete objects like this right so maybe there will be some other operation and maybe you will run a query based on some criteria and you will find this id and then use the id that you retrieve from the previous operation in this operation right so here i am just demonstrating uh, in isolation that how we use the delete uh, delete operation right and we have already seen that how we use the query so in the query you query the object based on some criteria say suppose where uh, name is j or where a street address is something contains something right and then you will get the id use that id in the delete operation right and uh, let me also show you how to query right so in each object right there is a id field that i'm going to show you let me see yeah where is my developer console select id and what was that employee address right yep and 
underscore c from em time and here will be double underscore yeah yeah so this is the id so maybe you will run this query before the delete operation you will get these ids and then use this id right um in the de delete operation right so something like that right so here there you go okay so but here i'm just running this uh delete operation in uh from 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 taking this ids from here so I hope this both are not same. Oh, I think both are same. No. So let's take this one. Yep, so we are good. We are here. Okay, I'm waiting for it to start. Let's try it from here. Yeah, so you can see here successful. So uh, because we deleted two uh, records, so we have to uh, we got the two items uh in in the result stating that both are uh deleted successfully this one is also this record is deleted successfully this record is also deleted successfully so this is what this um result tell from the sales uh, salesforce right we can verify that i'm here already so i think we deleted this right let's let's see because that records no longer exist so we'll come over here so 11 is gone all right so this is how delete operation work in the salesforce okay next we are going to see update okay we are going to see update operation now in salesforce we have two operations right one is update and other is absurd okay so what is different between these two so update do the update okay it will it will uh, it's a simple update right but and it it performs the update right based on the id right so you have your when you will perform the update operation you need to specify the id all right in case of absurd right it perform it can perform both okay it can update as well as it can insert right based on a based on an external id right so we specify the external id uh, of the object right so absurd operation check if that id external id already exists in the system or not so if exist then it will perform the update operation but if that external id does not exist right then it will perform the insert operation right so that is the difference between the update and absurd so in absurd if value if the uh, external id the value of external i mean 
when we uh, when we uh, run this we'll configure this we'll see it right but just for now understand like in upsert upsert operation has capability to do both update and insert both right so if the value of an object right uh, or the external id value of the object that we that we have specified in our payload in the mule if that value exist in the salesforce then it will perform update if that value does not exist then it will perform insert okay so that is the difference between the update and upsert right so let's first try update okay so here again select the connector configuration and then select the object which we want to update employee what object we want to update let's say suppose i want to employ this time okay so here we go i will come over here now this time we have to use the employ object okay so we are going to update the uh, employee name And the new value is say suppose uh, j yada. okay and then the we have to specify id id which we want to update or the uh, uh, id of object which we want to update right so again how we will find i mean you we have to find the uh, value of id from the query or something like that right so here i will get this value from here uh, from the user interface okay so say suppose this is the uh, object that i want to update okay so for me right now value is j only right let's see if my update operation works or not so that's it this is good to go okay so this says successful let's see There you go so it is updated so update is performed based on the id so this particular object is updated right from the id it has determined that which object it need to update all right now let's look at the upsert delete this guy Object. Let's see. EMP employee. Okay. And then we need to specify the external ID field name. Okay. It should pull actually. It should pull the metadata. Let's wait. External ID field name. Yep. Here it is. Right employee name okay so before performing any operation or to determine whether uh upsert should perform an update or an insert your upsert operation will query this record employee record to check if there is a value if already 
that particular record exists in, in, in the Salesforce or not. If that record exists, then it will perform the update. If it does not exist, then it will perform insert, right? So for example, let's, let's try this one, right? So employee name is Jay Prakash and say, suppose there is, there was another field called email. So J mm. Okay. So and uh, let's do one thing. Let's another object couple. Okay, so let's run this and let's see what happens. Okay, code has been deployed. Let's check. Come over here. Okay, so this is successful. Now, if you see here. Let's go over here and check what happened. Okay, now we have another object and the employee name is Kapil, right? And the em uh, email address is this. Now, if I run the same query, right, without changing the employee name, right? Now say, suppose I want to update the email address to this. At the rate of gmail.com, that's fine. So, this time actually, upsert should update this record instead of creating new record. Why? Because the value of external ID already exists, right? Value of external ID, which is couple, already exists. I saw some error. What was that? Let's see. Let's see. What is this? Null point exception. Okay. Let's see. Let's let me run it. We'll see. Okay. It says created. This time false. Right. And the but operation operation is successful. Right. So let's see. So it has updated this without creating a new record. Right, still we have the three records. So as you can see, in case of absurd, perform both insert and update. Right, so if the record already exists, it will be updated. If that record does not exist, then new record will be created. And uh, external ID is used to determine if record already exists or not, right? So this is how your update and absurd work. Um, okay, that's it.